As a form of reverence to our island and our culture, I would like to begin by reciting the Inifresi. The Inifresi is a Guam pledge written by Dr. Doka, which embodies the spirit of the Chamorro culture and the indigenous rights. The Inifresi is also said every morning in, this, in our schools, in our classrooms. So it begins. Inifresi, Guinea must tackle the you must tackle the curasom. Zani must figo, nani nasinam. Who are fressing my sensum. Had a Bible putehi, then who defendi. I had nengi, I katura, I lenguahi, I iri, I hanum zani tanatuan. Near a shoko de retsu guinness to us tata. Esti who are fitma, Gihilu i biblia, zani bandrahu i bandere guam. As it translates into English, from the highest of my thoughts to the deepest recesses of my heart, this I offer to protect and to defend the beliefs, the culture, the language, the air, the water, the land of the Chamorro people. I affirm this on the Bible and on the flag of Guam. As we embody this, the inner fressy in our everyday lives, we call to mind our commitment, our offering of ourselves, an offering of ourselves of stewardship. And this is what resonates and embodies our culture as Chamorros and as indigenous people. Indigenous peoples are connected to the land they are connected to the earth, the water, the air, and to one another. And I would like to share with you the stewards that I have had the opportunity to live amongst in my life. I have two grandmothers. They are both from the greatest generation. And this generation, when they were young, had experienced the atrocities of World War II and had experienced the suffering and physical harm that was imposed on them by the Japanese invasion. My grandmother Gloria, who is my father's mother, is a public servant. As a young girl, I recall going to grocery stores and immediately after following her to family homes, donating the groceries to those that were in need and the homes that we don donated these groceries to lacked running water, and were in need of power, and many of them were made out of tin and wood. But my grandmother also spent her time there. She spent her time discussing the needs of their family, how they were doing, and making connections of how they were related or who they were related to. Later after, my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer. As a result, she had to leave the island, as many residents do, to seek specialized care. Shortly after, my younger sister and I followed her to Los Angeles. And in between her treatments of chemo and radiation, I witnessed her going door to door to different areas of the hospital, greeting people who were from the islands. A hundred meters away was the medical housing facility that many of us stayed in. And some of the discussions that I heard as a young girl, some of the challenges and sufferings that the people were enduring while they were away, was the need for closeness and also the basic necessities in life, such as food and toiletries. My grandmother then took us and showed us this common area room, which was basically a living room in this medical housing facility. And she coordinated ways to transform that common area room into a community kitchen. Immediately after, she called the first lady, who was Jerry Gutierrez at the time, and implored her to send food or support and donations to fill the community kitchen. In a matter of 24 hours, we saw the community kitchen filled with 
different types of produce, vegetables, fresh meat, various amounts of canned goods, and herbs and spices. Following, she implemented a community cooking station for dinner time, where those that had time and were free to give themselves would create the dinner meal for everyone living in the medical house facility. And this really moved me, because before this kitchen was created, there was a disconnect with everyone living there. Everyone was rushing to their appointments. Everyone was uh, enduring their suffering. But when we started to have the dinner meals with everyone in the medical facility housing, we got to hear the stories of who they were, who their families were, how we were connected, and also to understand each other's suffering and to help each other in the suffering of their illness or the financial challenges that they faced. When I think about stewardship and protecting our land, our air, and our water, I recall my father, who was a farmer and a pescadot. I recall him walking the land, seeing which plot he would like to clear, and identifying every tree that he would want to preserve. And many of those trees were trees that bore fruit, or the ephid tree that would survive hundreds and hundreds of years. And then after that land was cleared, he took the resources from the land, utilizing every piece, utilizing the trees that he, he had cleared for, for furniture or for a fuel source for us to cook our food. And then I recall us working the land, and that was hard work. It was really blood, sweat, and tears. But the most enjoyable time came when we got to harvest. When we got to harvest the eggplant that we spent months growing, or the cherry tomatoes, or the chives, or the peppers. And we got to see the work of our hands. And this was when our family, from our extended family, would come and join us in this harvest. And we would celebrate, and we would barbecue, and we would share the harvest with our family and friends. With the water, my father taught me a great love and appreciation for our fish resources. He was a scuba diver. And I always asked him, how come you brought this much fish? Why couldn't you get more? And he would always say, we only take what we need. And it really resounded in me, in sustainability, of our waters and our fish resources. As I move to my adult life and, and understanding the stewardship that my grandmothers and my fathers have relayed to me through their action and not words, I have formed public policy advocating for the protection of Latexan and worked in assisting the protection of our aquifer lens which we only have one of. And this resonates with me because this is exactly what we recite as a people, as an indigenous people in our Inifresi, to protect and defend the land, the water, and the air. And as we move forward in our lives and looking at the generations that come after us, we must realize that we have been blessed to be in the presence of our grandparents. We must realize that we have been blessed to be in the presence of our parents. And also identify what we want to see for our future generations. We have raised a, a generation of activists. And so now I call each and every one of us to raise a generation of stewards. Stewards that will protect each other and defend each other. Stewards that are compassionate and caring and give of themselves and their time for those that are suffering and in need. Stewards that cultivate the land and work, with, and preserve, work to preserve it. 